for part two. Skip to twenty-nine minutes. I hadn't been doing anything special on that day. It all happened when I was, like always, sleeping in my ash-gray shirt and sweatpants that were much more comfy than pajamas. Hey, would you mind waking up? Mr. Kaima Masuda? Someone I didn't know was calling out my name, and before I knew it, everything except the clothes on my back was gone. My bed, my pillow, my apartment, heck, the apartment building, and even the ground were all gone, leaving me stranded in a star-dotted vacuum that looked a lot like space. After making sure that I could breathe properly, I opened my eyes. I felt a floaty sensation, as if I was still asleep. For a second I wondered if I had been kidnapped, but after seeing my surroundings, I assumed I was dreaming and tried to go back to sleep. This feels nice and floaty. I'm definitely getting a good night's sleep tonight. Um, would you please listen to me? I am a god, after all. Huh. Yeah, yeah, I'm listening. Is that true? You're not sleeping or anything, right? I don't have much time here. You're being summoned to another world right now. You'll regret it if you don't listen to me, okay? I'm listening, I'm listening. I don't know if I've ever met someone so lazy before. Well, it looks like we're out of time. I hate to let you go, but I guess I'll just have to ask the next person that comes by here. What? But I'll at least make sure you can understand the other world's language. And if you do help me out, I'll make sure you're repaid for your efforts. I wish not to work. The world you're being summoned to has magic, but civilization there hasn't developed very much. You'll have to work to survive. Plus, the fact you're being summoned means someone out there wants you to do some kind of job for them. I want to go home. Well, good luck. A bright light enveloped me, blinding my vision. Day one, a all right. The summoning was successful. Wait, what? A human? But why? I didn't know how it worked, but I appeared in a room with a faintly glowing floor and white walls. Is it still a room? If it's as big as a gymnasium? Either way, that's where I ended up. In front of me was a beautiful girl that looked a lot like the kind of princess knight you could find in all sorts of video games. She had golden hair that reached all the way down to her waist and a firm, though somewhat childish gaze. And lastly, long white boots that went all the way up to her thighs. Yep, those are some good legs. I've got a foot fetish though, so would you mind taking those boots off for a second? I really want to see what's under them. And after that, I'd appreciate it if you would put on some knee socks. Even some black ones would be fine. But I'm getting off track here. Apparently that hadn't been a dream, but the real issue was how extremely sleepy I was. I love sleeping more than I love eating three meals a day. Seriously. But why? I spent all of my DP. Why'd I have to get a small fry like Thias? Mind if I go back to sleep? Eh? You don't mind, right? Oh, by the way, do you have a bed or something? I.T. Teokt? What's with this girl? I just want to sleep, but she's screeching and ruining the mood. She's pretty attractive, mainly her feet, but I guess looks are only skin deep. What a shame. She'd be some really nice eye candy otherwise. Girl, what's going on? I've never heard of gotcha monsters talking. Oh, right, it's a human. Makes sense that it can talk, then. I guess. Hey, what's with you? Keep it down, you're making my ears hurt. Ah, uh, okay. Wait, no, what's with you? I'm the one who summoned you, so you should just listen to everything I say. Is your mom or dad nearby? I kinda wanna go home, so. I'm not a child. Listen up. You're a monster that's been summoned by me, this dungeon's core. I'll work you to the bone until you die, got it? Dungeon core. Monster. Yeah, I have no idea what's going on. If that god was telling the truth, I've been summoned to another world, and this girl is the person who summoned me. But it doesn't look like I'm a hero or anything. Phew. That's a relief. I don't want to get wrapped up in anything annoying like protecting the world or whatever. That'd get in the way of my precious sleeping time. Come on, stand up and go outside already. Kill all those bandits. I spent 1000 DP on you, so you're actually really strong, right? 
Holy crap, girl. You sure started saying some pretty violent things all of a sudden. I'm a little less sleepy now, seriously. All right, I'll listen to what you've got to say, but first you've got to help me out a little here. What's a dungeon core? What are monsters? What's DP? I can tell that, uh. You summoned me here. Oh wow, I'm impressed. Makes sense that a talking creature like you is a little smart too. Maybe you're a wizard type monster. Well, whatever. This is my dungeon. And obviously, this is the master room within me, the dungeon core. All right. What about the dungeon master? Oh, you know about dungeon masters? That's interesting. But my dungeon doesn't have one. Oh, wait. I guess that would make me the dungeon master, kinda? Naturally, I knew nothing about the dungeon masters of this world, but I could guess that they existed thanks to how many fantasy games I've played. But she also mentioned a dungeon core. That must be the heart of this dungeon. And also, this girl? Hey, wait a second. You said I'm a small fry since I'm a human, but aren't you a human too? Nah. This is just my human form. Hey. Wait a second. You need to start calling me master. Ah, that's right, you haven't told me your name yet. What is it? Me? I'm Dungeon Core number 695. A number? Really? That's pretty lazy. But wait. If she's number 695, that must mean there's 694 other dungeons. Okay, I take it back. I would get pretty lazy naming them too. I don't even know if I could think up that many names. All right, you're Rokuko now. Um, I'm what? I mean, it'd be pretty hard to call you Dungeon Whatever Number Whatever, so I'll just name you Rokuko. Full name being Rokuko Dungeon Core. Oh, by the way, my name's Kaima Masuda. Go ahead and call me Kaima. Not Masuda, Kaima. Dungeon Core number 695, henceforth known as Rokuko, looked at me with complete bafflement in her eyes. What? Masuda. Master Kaima. Is that a fake name or something? Wait, what did you just make me essay? Kaima Masuda has been recognized as Dungeon Master. Why? Why? Rokuko and I both said the exact same thing at the same time. A transparent, green window popped up before my eyes. It looked like the kind of message window you see in video games all the time. Written on that window in white letters was a message describing that I had been recognized as this dungeon's master. I have no idea what's going on, but I guess I'm a dungeon master now. Menu. Hold on. I take it back. Cancel. Undo what just happened. The blonde girl. Rokuko summoned her own window and shouted at it, but nothing in particular happened. Ah. Uh, my ears are really starting to hurt, sheesh. Hey, you're being loud as hell right now. Tone it down a little. Actually, just shut up entirely. W.H. What's with you? Don't order. Me. Arrow. She shut up. Oh, yeah? I'm the dungeon master now and it looks like dungeons have to obey their master no matter what. He hey. A perfect life without work may have just fallen straight into my lap. That's right. I won't have to work anymore. I'll make this blonde girl do all my work for me while I sleep all day every day. It'll be perfect, dot yeah, I'd have to be a completely trash person to do something like that. Wow. Not to mention she's a girl. It just wouldn't work out. If she were my age or older, I could at least rest easy while making her do my chores or whatever, but she looks younger than me. She's like a middle schooler at best. Considering how well-developed some elementary schoolers are nowadays, she could probably get discounts at theme parks without trying too hard. Ah, uh, menu? Whoa! It actually popped up. Let's see. What do we have here? A transparent window appeared before me after I called out for it. It was basically a video game menu. Everything I could do was listed out for me in a clear, easy-to-comprehend way. I had three main options available to me. Dungeon Minions Dungeon Point Catalog Everything was written in nice and easy Japanese for me. Wait. Or is this what that god meant when he said he'd help me understand the language? 
Yeah, that must be it. Dungeon Point Catalog. Looks like I can use that DP Rokoko was talking about earlier to do things here. Oh wow, she's glaring at me pretty hard. Ha ha ha, you aren't scary at all. You're actually pretty cute when you can't talk. I'll give her head a little rub. Oh, that just made her more angry. She's screaming, but no words are coming out. Fantastic. All right, you can talk again. Trash. Idiot. Ah, uh, finally, I can talk again. What did you do to me, you piece of walking garbage? Uh-huh. I'm afraid to say that the only idiot here is you, Rokuko. It seems like you accidentally made me your master. Or in other words, your dungeon master. Undo that. Why? Be because. I'm. I'm the most important person here. Obey me. Obey. The blonde girl glared at me, cheeks flushed red and eyes brimming with tears. But now I know for sure. This girl's an idiot. Don't call me an idiot. Oh, did I say that out loud? But seriously. Think about it. Why did you summon me? Well, to make you a monster in my dungeon. In other words, if I obey you, I'll be forced to fight as a dungeon monster under your command. I'd live or die by the orders you give me. Actually, I'm pretty confident that any order you'd give me would just lead to me dying. So, I'm not gonna give up my power over you. No way. I love sleeping, but I'm a bit young to start sleeping for eternity, if you catch my drift. W.L., that's just how dungeon monsters work. And you look pretty weak, so. Looks like we're finally on the same page. Though she's not too happy about it. I said this earlier, but you can call me Kaima. Hmm, okay, Kaima. N-G-H. I can't resist you. Anyway, I'm gonna check out the dungeon real fast. I'd like my sleeping arrangements to be nice and safe, after all. I selected dungeon. From the menu. Just touching it worked fine but I imagine it would have responded to voice commands as well. Okay, let's check out this dungeon map. She was saying something about bandits, so... So, it looks to me that the dungeon core is right in the middle of the room filled with invading bandits. It looks that way to me too. Why? Eh? Don't you know that the dungeon core won't work unless it's placed inside of the dungeon? That's just common sense. I was starting to get a headache dungeon cores don't work unless they're placed inside of a dungeon. This dungeon only had one room. So, the dungeon core was placed inside of that room. And there were eight bandits inside that very same room. This dungeon's already completely friggin' screwed. It was a complete checkmate. Why did she let things get this bad? This is why I used all the DP I had to summon a monster that could beat all those bandits. But what I got instead was you, Kaima. By the way, what'll happen to me, the dungeon master, if the dungeon core gets destroyed? Well, obviously you'll die. The master and the core are connected, they live and die together. Holy crap, I'm gonna die. I'm completely done for. Oh god. Don't worry, it's okay. The core will be fine even if the master dies. What's okay about that? And weren't you just talking about us living and dying together? Ah, uh, yeah? Really, don't worry. You're not going to die yet. After hearing that, I realized that I wasn't dead yet despite how it had been several minutes since I first saw that the core was surrounded. I glanced at Rokuko and saw that she was looking at me with an irritated expression that said, Humph, why are you getting so worked up over nothing? How about I tickle your feet until you pee yourself, huh? Huh? What's going on? Well, about that. It's been three days since these bandits invaded my dungeon, but they haven't tried to destroy its core at all. Why? Look, you can use the dungeon menu to look into the dungeon and monitor it directly. As advised, I opened a monitor through the dungeon menu. A new window appeared from thin air before me, displaying what looked like video footage from a security camera placed inside of the dungeon. The bandits were all sleeping around the dungeon core. Two of them seemed to be awake and keeping guard, but... All right. They don't seem like they're about to attack the core. By the way, the core was about the size of a basketball and was glowing much like the walls and floor of the room I was in. See? 
I don't really know what's going on, but we're safe for now. Plus, I get more DP when intruders are in the dungeon, so it works out. By the way, how do you get more DP? Um, so? To summarize what Rokuko said, one absorb it from the surrounding ground. This tends to be about 10 DP a day to allow time to pass while an intruder is inside of the dungeon. Varies depending on the strength of the intruder 3 kill an intruder. Varies depending on the strength of the intruder 4 offer up a corpse. Varies depending on the former strength of whoever died 5 offer up treasure. Varies depending on the treasure those were the main ways. By the way, it would cost about 20 DP to summon one goblin. Under normal circumstances she would be able to summon one goblin every two days, but the eight bandits sleeping in the dungeon boosted her DP gain by an additional 80 DP each day, and apparently that number would increase if they stayed inside the dungeon for longer. So, using the 900 DP she saved up through 10 days of being inhabited by bandits, in addition to 100 DP she had stashed away for a rainy day, Rokuko had pulled all of her 1,000 DP into rolling a single monster gacha. Yeah. I can understand why she would expect something as strong as 50 goblins after spending 50 goblins worth of DP on something. But sometimes, you gamble and you lose. And wait a second, I'm what she got out of a gacha roll. Seriously? So, why aren't you a dragon? I mean, it wouldn't be surprising if you had rolled a goblin. You're being too greedy. Rokoku was just way too egotistical. Did she think she was the center of the universe or something? Bad things happen to everyone, you can't expect everything to go well for you. You might even end up being summoned to another world and forced to work against your will even though you just want to sleep. Oh, I forgot to mention. Right now, the 10 DP from the ground doesn't count. Huh? Why not? Rokuko's explanation about DP hadn't mentioned anything about intruders getting in the way of drawing DP from the ground. Well, it costs some DP for me to maintain this form. Speaking of which, Rokuko had mentioned that she was the avatar of the dungeon core or something like that. Does that mean she could save us some DP by vanishing? Eh? No, you're misunderstanding something. This is just a special form I use when I want to look fancy. I didn't want the monster I summoned to look down on me. In other words, that's just a temporary form. Oh, can you go back to your normal form then? You're wasting DP. Eh? It's not temporary or anything, but okay. One second. And then N. Rokuko flashed brightly, and then where she once stood was a blonde lowly that looked just like a younger Rokuko. She was wearing a white dress and would only reach my waist even if she stood on her tippy toes. She looked so small and cute a lilicon would be drooling at the sight of her. Even her childishly spoiled gaze just made me smile as if I were looking at a rowdy kid. So, what do you think? This is the low-energy form I use to save DP. Oh, that's your low-energy form, huh? You look pretty young. H.M.? Well, I guess I do look like a child from a human's perspective. What, do you like this body more? I'm not a lilicon, so I think she looked hotter before. I still love her toes even though they're smaller, but I'm not perverted enough to lay my hands on someone that looks like a little girl. So, now we're getting 10 DP again, yeah? Uh-huh. 10 DP a day. And we have 9 DP total right now. She must have waited until the very moment she had 1,000 DP to roll the gacha, given how basically no DP was left over. I scrolled through the DP catalog, but found that you couldn't even summon a goblin with 9 DP. How about a dragon? Lady, even the weakest dragon there, a lesser dragon, costs 100,000 DP. Ha ha! Whoever thought they could get an expensive monster like that for 1,000 DP sure is an idiot. I searched the household goods page and discovered that I could buy lots of things even with just 9 DP. All right, I've decided. On what, Kaima? I exchanged 5 DP for a buckwheat pillow. I'm going to bed. Eh? Hold on. What about the bandits? Be quiet while I'm sleeping. Night. Yep. DP sure is useful. I rolled onto my side and closed my eyes listening as Rokuko's noisy cries slowly faded into silence. Day two I stood up after waking up and stretched my stiff muscles. 
The floor was pretty warm, not cold at all, but it was also hard and constantly glowing. Not exactly the best place to get a good night's sleep. I had been hoping that I might find myself back in my room after waking up, but had no such luck. I glanced to the side and saw Rokuko glaring at me. Gur, why you're finally awake, Kaima? Yo, Rokuko. How long was I asleep? As if I know. You slept for nine hours. Ah, my mouth said that on its own. I didn't know if time moved at the same speed as it did on Earth, but I decided to just roll with it and assume I had indeed slept for nine hours. I checked our DP and saw that our 4 DP had turned into 34 DP. I guess the bandits' DP trickles in overtime. The bandits probably aren't all as strong as each other either, so I should just give up on making precise estimations of DP gain. What time is it right now? It's 8 in the morning. By the way, one day has 24 hours in it. Wait. Ah, uh, why am I answering you? Thanks, much appreciated. By the way, end every sentence you say with meow. Don't mess with meow. Each day consisted of 24 hours. As an aside, each year seemed to consist of 12 months, or 365 days. Basically the same thing as Earth. Perfect, I won't have any trouble remembering that. Just for peace of mind, I investigated how much weight my orders held and learned that Rokuko's body would execute them on its own. I'm in another world and there's a girl who has to listen to everything I say. If I weren't a gentleman dedicated to sleep, there would be some adult-only things happening right now. I canceled the meow order and decided to double-check the situation. What's going on with the bandits? They just woke up and went outside. One stayed behind to stand guard. Hmm. So, let's summon a goblin or something. DP summoning. Goblin. What? While I was in the middle of being stunned, a faintly glowing circle appeared on the ground. It then flashed brightly, and before I knew it, there was a small, ugly-looking person with green skin standing where the circle used to be. The same thing probably happened when I got summoned. Okay. Not okay. Oh we? I thumped Rokuko on the head. I checked our DP and saw that we only had 14 DP left. 20 DP was gone, just like that. WH, why do you do that? Getting hit like that hurts. What do you do if you break me? Don't just up and use DP on your own like that, idiot. What? It's my DP. I can do whatever I want with it. Okay, yeah? She's an idiot. I grabbed onto Rokoko's head and forced her to look me in the eyes. It's not your DP anymore. It's my DP. If you really want to use it for something, get my permission first. You don't want to die, right? Tell me more about this place first. And, can we return this goblin? Nope. So, we're right by Tsaya Mountain. By the way, this dungeon's name is... I heard an adventurer say that. Seriously? They're not even thinking of this place as a dungeon. Come on. Hey, won't you kill that bandit for me? We would get lots of DP if you kill him. MMM, it feels like he would be worth about 200 DP. That may sound nice, but he would be worth just as much if he stuck around the dungeon for ten full days. Nah, we're not going to attack the bandits yet. Why not? He's all alone. We could take him down if we had. Around ten goblins. You'd spend two hundred DP to earn two hundred DP. And we don't even have enough DP to summon that many, anyway. But seriously. Goblins are as weak as they look, huh? Ten goblins to take down one bandit. Dang. We're gonna keep saving DP for now. Don't waste any of it. We'll be better off saving a ton and using it all at once. And right now, we're better off not agitating the bandits. What do you do if we send out goblins and they decide to destroy the dungeon core to stop that from happening again? Ah. Uh, I didn't think about that at all. You sure are smart, Kaima. Nah, you're just an idiot. And now that you know that, listen to everything I say. Got it? Oh, okay. I will. Rokuko nodded obediently. I guess in her energy-saving form, both her body and her mind are that of a kid's. Nah, she was always like that. 
She's a ditzy airhead through and through. All of a sudden, my stomach grumbled. Oh, yeah? I haven't eaten anything since yesterday. All right, time to eat. Got any food? Eh? Ah, right. Monsters need to eat food, right? I don't need to eat anything, so I totally forgot about that. Guess she's still gonna treat me like a monster. I flipped through the DP catalog for food. There were lots of things there, but I went ahead and spent five DP to buy bread and water. A magic circle appeared with a flash, and soon enough, darkish bread and a wood cup appeared above it. After splitting half of it with the quietly sitting goblin, we ate together like pals. The bread was really, really hard. I felt as if it were just sitting in clumps in my stomach, but I was tired enough to just go back to sleep right away. Day three two days had passed since I was summoned. Looks like we've got 179 DP now. Wait, no. It just went up to 180. I could summon nine whole goblins with this much. As an aside, I had figured out why the bandits hadn't destroyed the dungeon core. They were using it in place of a foot warmer. The dungeon core glowed faintly and was just a little warm. The boss of the bandits had built his bed in the core room and was putting his feet on it as he slept. I learned that we could look directly out of the master room, but after trying it out, an entire wall turned into a close-up of a dirty foot. Naturally, it was terrible. Hello, Miss Dungeon Core. How does it feel to have your heart getting stepped on? W. Well, I'm earning a lot of DP thanks to them being here, so... This is like a win-win, you know? Humph. Our lovable blonde Loli had gotten teary-eyed after realizing that her heart was being trampled by stinky-looking feet. Honestly, she gets cuter the more time I spend with her. I spent some more time investigating the menu and learned that I could look into the dungeon from basically any angle I wanted by using the existing walls and ceilings. All right. Guess I should finally start doing something. You'll summon something, right? You'll summon a lot of goblins and kill them all, right? Ah, uh, buying a lizard man for 150 DP might be smart. I won't forgive that bandit boss. Let's stab him to death. Idiot. They'll just kill us in revenge if we try that. Look at how many of them there are. As expected, she felt humiliated over having her heart used as a simple foot warmer. She was practically barking like a dog and growling at the bandit's boss. Though given how cute her appearance was in energy-saving mode, she was more like a puppy than anything. There's eight of them. We're way too weak to take them on. And if you hadn't summoned that first goblin, we wouldn't need to waste so much DP on food. Mm, the maintenance cost. I had never thought of that before. Wait. Didn't you waste a bunch of DP on that futon or whatever? Don't be ridiculous. That futon 50 DP was an absolutely necessary expense. So, what are you going to do? I've got a plan, but... Hey, Rokuko, do you know how to write words? And do you think those bandits can read? Writing? Uh-huh, I can write. I saw those bandits reading a book they stole from someone before, so... They can definitely read simple things. Sweet. Then listen closely and write the things I tell you to. Okay. Bus. Wake you up. The boss of the bandits woke up in the cave and saw a chest in front of him. Was this thing here yesterday? Nah, no way. I woulda saw it before sleeping. The hell is this thing? Where'd it come from? We dunno, know, boss. Rodridge was on guard and he said nobody brought it inside or nothing dot. So what you're saying is? It just poofed and appeared in the middle of this cave like magic? Air. I guess so? The bandit boss investigated the chest, but didn't find any traps inside of it. He opened it carefully and saw that an iron helmet was resting inside. It was a high-quality helmet, and it looked new, too. Hey, this thing is pretty nice. We could sell it for a lot of money. Or we could use it either way. Boss, there's something written on the bottom of the chest. Eh? The hell? Letters? Hey, Brockin. You can read, right? Read this. You got it, boss. Let's see. The boss showed the chest to a subordinate and made him read it. The contents of the message were unbelievable. I am the dungeon core. 
Thank you for defeating those goblins. This is a present from me. It may take some time, but if you bring me corpses, I can give you more presents. Dungeon Core Hey, are we in a fucking dungeon? I dunno. I heard this place was just an ordinary cave. Ah, uh, seriously? Looks like luck's finally on my side. Why? Why did you make me thank them? The blonde lowly stomped around in a circle. I can see your white panties, you know? Absolutely shameful. Though, I definitely understood why she was so upset. After all, I had spent every last DP we had giving that, present, to the bandit's boss. To be specific, I had spent 5 DP on a pen and ink, 5 DP on a treasure chest, and 170 DP on a high-quality steel helmet. We now had absolutely no DP left. Zero DP. Silch. Why? It would have been way, way better for us to spend all that DP on goblins. And then die after the bandits came swinging at us? Ha ha ha, sorry, but I don't want to die yet. I just want to sleep. Be but still. That was just... Gur, you traitor. Calm down. That gift just bought us some valuable time. I'll kill them all soon enough, trust me. Eh? Rokuko blinked in surprise, as if she hadn't expected me to say something like, I'll kill them all. But why? Didn't you give them that gift because you're a human and want to help them out? What? No. I just want my sleeping arrangements to be safe. And that's not gonna happen with dangerous guys like them hanging around. Yeah. Th then, well, don't you feel bad about killing members of your own species? Nope. I just want to sleep. And it's not like I'm gonna be doing anything to them myself, so. All right. I don't have anything else to do today, so I can just go ahead and sleep. I got into my futon and rolled onto my side. Explain what's going on. All right, all right. I'll explain everything. Tomorrow. Sleep tight. Didn't go to sleep. Rokuko's voice faded out as I fell asleep. Day four, ah, I slept pretty well. I really want a better futon. Good morning. You really slept for the whole day. Don't you get tired of doing that? Not at all. So, now that you're awake, explain what's going on. But first, look at the DP. What's going on? I opened the menu to check our DP and saw that we now had 867 DP. Huh. Oh wow, it shot way up. Not quite as much as I was hoping for, but this will do. Are you saying you knew this would happen? Huh. Uh, basically, but let me ask you this first. Did something happen? Some adventurers attacked. According to Rokuko, a bandit standing guard noticed that adventurers were on their way to the cave, so all the bandits hid in the main room out of sight from the entrance corridor before launching a surprise attack. They then defeated the four adventurers without a single scratch on any of them. So, after that, the bandits looted the adventurers' corpses and offered up their corpses to me. They even went out of their way to push them against the dungeon core. I could do that on my own if they just left the corpses lying around in the dungeon, though. They figured that out after I went out of my way to absorb the corpses they weren't pushing against me, I think. They killed them inside of the dungeon, huh? I guess those bandits are smarter than you, Rokuko. What do you mean by that? I mean what I said. After hearing that, Rokuko's smile became a peeved frown, cheeks puffing out. It looked less like she was angry and more like she was pouting. But how did you know that the adventurers were coming? Seriously. Didn't you say yourself that adventurers come here once or twice a month? Ah. Uh, now that you mention it, I did say that. But Kaima, wouldn't you prefer it if the bandits left? No, I wouldn't. I can't kill them all if they run away, right? There's a bunch of DP right there waiting for us. I don't want to waste it. I'm gonna squeeze every last bit of value from them that I can. Wow. You called them DP even though you're a human too. Kaima, I'm starting to respect you a little bit. You monster. Thanks. Now I'm gonna go back to sleep. Night night. You're going back to sleep even though you just woke up. What an idiot. You can obviously only go back to sleep right after waking up. 
It's a precious opportunity. However, we're gonna add a room. We have enough ink to write another letter on a treasure chest, right? Eh? Oh, right. We do. But are you really going to waste DP on a room? We have so much. Rokuko said that while flipping through the DP catalog and looking at all the monsters we could summon for 800 DP. Ha ha ha. Will this blonde lowly never learn? All right, here I go. After some time. Why, why did you make me spend 480 whole DP on that guy? Whoa, now. 10 DP for the treasure chest and pillow, 20 DP for the two wooden doors, and 50 DP for the simple bed. We only spent 80 DP on him. What? It cost 200 DP each to add those rooms, didn't it? Don't be stupid. Unlike that steel helmet, they can't take those rooms from the dungeon and sell them. They're permanently ours. Rokuko tilted her head with a confused expression on her face, not understanding what I had meant. Wait a second. We have a big problem. All of our 870 DP is gone, completely gone. Yeah, cause I used it all. On what? Take a look. I showed her the dungeon map. Using the camera, I went outside the dungeon and showed her that I had built. Another single room cave elsewhere on the mountain and added a dirt path to connect it with the main body of the dungeon. The room had cost 200 dp and the 5 meter wide path had cost 30 dp. P. Ha! I never would have thought about expanding the dungeon from the outside. You sure have a lot of crazy ideas, Kaima. But what are you going to do with that room? Wasn't it a complete waste of dp? Rejoice, my companion. This is a room made especially for goblins, just like you've always wanted. Yay, wait, did I want something like that? Don't you love goblins? She was always telling me to summon goblins this, summon goblins that. It took a bit, but it finally dawned on me. Rokuko loves goblins. She wants to be surrounded by goblins. She wants goblins to serve her. She wants to be queen of the goblins. Um, I think you're taking things the wrong way. Don't worry, I'm not going to make fun of you. Everyone has their own fetishes. My friend, I'll fight by your side even if you do have a massive goblin fetish. Hey, what do you mean by that? What's with that understanding look in your eyes? You don't understand anything. By the way, I'm not a lilicon. I just love feet. The only thing I dig about your current body is your feet. Hey, no, no. Seriously, what are you even saying? And why do you look so condescending? Anyway, there's nothing left for us to do now that we're out of DP. Time to go back to sleep for the third time. I got back into my futon and listened to Rokuko's voice fade out. How long is that order gonna last? Day five I'm awake again, but we still don't have enough DP. Oh yeah? It might be a bit late for this, but I'll go ahead and explain how I'm surviving in here. What I'm eating, how I'm using the bathroom all that good stuff. Food-wise, I was eating a set three times a day. By the way, the bread that came in that set wasn't just hard rye bread. The menu was nice enough to allow me to pick between pastries and even bread prepared with other food items such as meat or vegetables. I would pick the bread with as much food as possible and then split it with the goblin. As for the bathroom, well, I was taking care of business in the corner of the room. Don't worry, I had set up a screen partition and got some toilet paper first. There was nothing else I could do, since I was stuck in the master room. If I tried leaving it, I would end up face to face with the bandits. Thankfully, the dungeon core would suck up everything that came out of me, so we didn't have to worry about the smell or anything. Though Rokuko grimaced whenever she sucked up my poop. How would you feel if someone pooped inside of your heart? Huh? Not good, right? Ha ha ha, you're a girl, you shouldn't be saying poop. What's your problem, anyway? The goblin is pooping inside of you, too. Shouldn't a goblin fetishist like you be crying of happiness? Hey, seriously, is that really what you think of me? You know I'm an intelligent life form, right? Yeah. You're still kind of a mystery to me, honestly. Despite all that, I hadn't showered at all since being summoned. Just when I was thinking about how my hair would probably start to stink soon, I looked at the goblin next to me. His face was as gruesome as ever, 
and his massive tusk-like fangs looked like they would really hurt if he bit you with them. His clothes? Nothing but a ragged cloth wrapped around his waist. He's a pretty wild guy. I would have thought that a wild guy like this would start stinking like a dog after a few days of no washing, but he was still completely clean. Did he have some kind of secret I didn't know about? My questions were all answered by Rokuko. Oh, I've been using the survival magic purification on him. It was literally magic. Right, right. This is a fantasy world. Magic, huh? Well, that's that then. Would you mind casting it on me too? Why? You need purification too? Oh, I see. You're playing favorites with the goblin because you have a goblin fetish. No. I just didn't know that dungeon masters needed purification. And anyway, do that yourself, sheesh. Hey, now, why are you acting like I can use magic? Eh? You can't? Apparently, all humans were capable of using magic. Even the bandits had been using it when I wasn't looking. Wait, seriously? Do I just know nothing about nothing? Oh, wait. This is a fantasy world, obviously I don't know much of anything. I wonder if I can use purification too. I'll try asking her how to use it. You just, like, build up your mana and cast purification. That's all. That didn't help at all. What do you mean, build up my mana? What do you mean, just cast purification? Kaima. You can use the menu, can't you? It's basically the same thing as that. Seriously? Purification. Oh wow, that actually worked. A fluffy, lemony sensation washed over my body from head to toe and purified it. Now I can sleep as much as I want, completely clean. By the way, you can cast simple survival spells with just mana and some mental effort, but you'll have to learn stronger spells through scrolls before you can use them. Scrolls. Uh-huh. You could teach yourself the spells by figuring them out from the ground up with logic, but that's not reasonable for most people. Only researchers really do that. So, normally you'll have to use scrolls to learn magic. Well, I've never used the scroll myself, but... Oh, maybe there are some in the DP catalog? I checked the DP catalog and saw that in the treasure section there were plenty of scrolls like the Fireball Scroll 500 DP or the Earth Barrier Scroll 700 DP. Each spell belonged to an element, and the four main elements were Earth, Water, Wind, and Fire. There were also special elements known as Light, Darkness, and Space-Time. Spells were then classified even further beyond that, with each one either being a Bottom Rank, Low Rank, Mid Rank, High Rank, Special Rank, King Rank, or God Rank spell. For instance, was a low-rank fire spell. And in the midst of all that, there was one mid-rank earth spell that caught my eye. Create golem scroll 10,000 dp very interesting. I might be able to use this spell to summon a servant that will obey my every command. Well, technically Rokuko is kind of like a servant that will obey my every command, but she's a girl. And she looks super young in her energy-saving form. I want something more like a robot to order around. I definitely want to get this scroll soon, but I don't know if I should get it or the equally expensive heavenly pillow first. It feels like people are coming. I glanced at Rokuko after she murmured that to me. Bandits? I don't think so. They're probably adventurers. I think the bandits just noticed them too. I guess they're gonna do another surprise attack? All right. They're almost definitely investigating this cave since those last adventurers never came back. I didn't expect them so soon, but they presented a good opportunity. I decided to tell Rokuko about the rest of my plan to eliminate the bandits. She won't try to do anything unnecessary if she knows what's really going on here. Since they came all the way to investigate us, they're stronger than the last adventurers that came here. After all, it'd just be a waste of time if they sent some weaker people that ended up not coming back either. From the bandits' perspective, they couldn't let anyone see this completely changed and survive to tell the tale. So, they'll have to kill all the adventurers. No survivors. And if those adventurers never return, another group will come to investigate. And of course, that group will be even stronger than the last one. I don't know how long it'll take but at some point, the bandits will lose. 
and there you have it. That's the plan I have for slaughtering every single one of the bandits. Right now, my job is just making sure the bandits don't try to flee their hideout before it gets crushed. I wonder what'll happen if someone from this world eats a melon roll or something. Melon roll? What's that? I don't see anything like that in the DP catalog. What are you talking about? It's right there. Though, I did just find it a second ago. Kill. Holy cow, this tastes amazing. This is so good. Kaima, did you used to eat things this tasty all the time? So, after letting Rokoko try out some melon roll because she looked pretty curious about it, she started stuffing her face with it, eyes shining. Wait, you eat bread? Wait, I mean, you can actually eat stuff? First time I'm seeing that. What? It's not like I can't eat food or anything. But you don't need to, right? I don't, but it's like... A treat. I'm treating myself. Um... Do you have any more? I mean, you know that a single one of these costs 5 DP, right? When it comes with a drink, anyway. You can get six of them at once with a pastry set, so that'll be the better deal. It'll be cheaper to buy a drink from a 5 DP barrel, too. Wait a second. Buying in bulk is so cheap I feel like I was getting ripped off before. But I don't remember seeing this in the DP menu before. What's going on? Well, there's a whole world of bread out there. But we need to save DP right now. There's more kinds of bread like this. You don't have to be so stingy. We have like 2,000 DP right now, don't we? It'll be okay if we just spend a little. Just a little. Oh man. She looks dead serious about this. You bought a bunch of useless things like that pillow and futon, didn't you? Let me spend some on myself too. Hey, you got to buy a goblin, didn't you? What? G. Gobsook has nothing to do with this. And he was just 20 DP. You're using almost that much every day just to eat, aren't you? Gobsook? You named him? I never heard about that. Whoa now. Don't forget, I'm splitting half of my food with the goblin. If you include that, he's already cost us way more than just 20 DP. And he's not helping us out at all right now, so he's basically your pet. Th, that's not true. Gobsook has a lot of potential. He'll be a big help to us. Right, Gobsook? Gobsook tilted his head in surprise, as if wondering why we had suddenly brought him into this. For some reason, despite how hideous his goblin face was with its squashed nose and giant teeth, he looked a lot like a dog. I wonder if he'll eat dog food? Well, anyway. I actually don't mind if you spend a little on yourself, as long as you don't go too far. It won't cost us any extra DP if we buy our food and drink in bulk, so that's a bonus. We'll actually save a ton of DP buying in bulk, but I'll keep quiet about that. Yay. Then hurry up and buy me a pastry set. Why don't you do that yourself? You can use the DP catalog too, right? Eh? But I've never seen a pastry set or a melon rolls or anything like those in it. Oh wait, I have more options now. Wow, I didn't know I could buy stuff like this here. Oh, there really are a lot of different kinds of bread. Rye bread, wheat bread, melon roll. So many options. Huh? Wait a second. Hey, tell me what you're seeing in the catalog again. Eh? Like I said, rye bread, wheat bread, and melon roll. Just those three? Um? Aha, uh -huh, just those three. Why? I went ahead and bought a pastry set, with my individual choices being cream roll, jelly roll, steamed roll, red bean paste roll, apple pie, and a fried roll. Do you know what these are? Kinds of bread, right? Wow, I've never seen bread that looks like this before. And why does all the bread you summon always end up covered in this weird, transparent stuff? Can I eat that too? Nope, you can't. That's plastic. You rip it apart to get to the food inside. By the way, this is called a jelly roll. Try eating it. Hmm, a jelly roll. Let's see. Nom, hmm. So tasty. Jelly rolls taste amazing too. Wow, there's some yellow stuff inside of it. Oh, so sweet. What is this stuff? It's delicious. I handed over the cream roll, having more or less figured out what's going on. Rokuko, 
Check out the pastry set again and see if you have more options this time. Eh? Okay. I do have more options. I can pick a jelly roll now. Wow, this is all new to me. Alright. The next time you want a jelly roll, buy it yourself. Get it in a set with some melon rolls if you want. Really? Ahaha, okay. Th then I'll get three of each. Oh sure, I'd love to have one of your jelly rolls. Thanks. Aya? Right after Rokuko summoned her pastry set, I stole one of her jelly rolls. Yep. This is a cream roll. Any way I look at it, this is a cream roll. Plus, it's completely bare without any plastic surrounding it. Sorry, Rokuko. What I gave you was actually a cream roll. This is a real jelly roll. Eh, really? Wow. So this is an actual jelly roll. Whoa, this one has red stuff inside of it. And it's super sweet. It looks like the DP catalog prioritizes displaying only items that the user of the menu is familiar with. It's very possible that it just fundamentally won't show items that the user doesn't know about. Since Rokuko's pastries weren't wrapped in plastic, just knowing the name of something must not be enough for it to be put on the catalog. Does the dungeon need to have absorbed it before? Wait, no, that doesn't make sense. She's absorbed plastic plenty of times. I guess it does have to do with being familiar with the item. Either way, it's very likely that none of this applies to things from this world. I've never seen an actual dragon before, but it's on my menu. Though I do know that dragons are the classic dungeon master monster of choice. I want to dig into this a little more, but this is getting pretty tedious. I don't want to waste DP either. Rokuko was looking at me impatiently as I contemplated the inner workings of the DP catalog to myself. I can eat them now, right? Right. Yeah, go ahead. By the way, those are all the pastries you'll be getting for four days, so don't go through them too fast. And be sure to split them with gobsuk. What? Rokuko froze with half of a cream roll in her mouth. Don't worry, I'll split my food with gobsuk even if you eat all of those pastries yourself. Not that I'm gonna tell you that, though. Day eleven two days after he had lost five lackeys, the bandit boss came back from town with some replacements. Nineteen replacements, even. There were eight bandits at the start, then the seven newbies, five of which died, so that left ten. Now it's twenty-nine, three times that. Nice. I wondered where he had gotten them. But then I saw two tied-up adventurers in their midst. Whoops. Minus those two, it's actually twenty-seven. Isn't that still enough to form a small village or something? Oh wow. Those are all slaves, except the sacrifices. You can tell just by looking at them, ah? I see the collars now. Well, whatever. Two sacrifices. All right, I'll make a room just for them. I've been wanting to make a jail and see what its deal is for a while now. A jail was an especially expensive. 300 DP room. I was hoping that it'd have some kind of special effect or something. After adding the extra room, the dungeon looked like from above a square with its top right section cut off. But wait. Bandits can buy slaves in this world? Apparently, humans who break the law can end up slaves. They're called convict slaves. But they'll go right back to breaking the law if bandits buy them. What's even the point? Either way, I noticed two of the slaves that stood out from the rest. One was an adult woman and one a young girl. They weren't very dirty, likely thanks to this world's survival magic. Yeah, those rags are so torn up they're basically naked. That's hot. But wait a second. The slave the boss is carrying definitely isn't even ten years old yet. Why'd he buy a kid with dead-looking eyes like that? Is he gonna raise her as his daughter or something? And hold up, she's got dog ears too. Another fantasy staple has come, a dark-skinned dog girl. She even has black eyes and hair. That's the first time I've seen either of those in this world. Actually, I just noticed that the older woman has wings growing out of her arms. Is she a bird person? Is that what I should call them? Bird people? Nah, they're probably called harpies or something. This world sure has a lot of colorful races. Wait, wait. Hold on. Hold on. There. Sex. Slaves. 
we're gonna turn into an adult-only story this late in the game. And with that this video ends. Hope you guys enjoyed our efforts. And if you did please leave a like. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss the update, and it will also keep our spirits up. Thanks for watching. We will see you in the next video.